This goes against pretty much everything you'll see online, but the reality is most people building apps aren't looking for giant rounds of investing or trying to become the next unicorn startup. Instead, most people who want to transition from what they're doing now into running an app full time are doing so because they don't want to work for other people anymore. They want to live a more flexible lifestyle and ultimately they just want to be able to spend their time how they want to and make an amount of money that will allow them to do that. If that sounds like you too, then I want to share five specific signs that I've learned are really strong signals that you will be able to go full time with your app. And I say this from having worked with lots of other seven figure entrepreneurs in masterminds and group coaching programs, and also just working with so many entrepreneurs directly as we help them build and launch their apps. These are also things that personally helped us leave our former jobs almost a decade ago and transition full time into what we're doing now. And the first one is this. You have personal experience with the problem your product or your app will solve. If you have personal experience with the problem your app is going to be solving, it means you fully understand the pain points and the frustrations that come along with this problem you get the processes that need to happen in order to solve the problem. And you also have connections with the people in the market. And that's huge, both for informative purposes, feedback, getting those first users. On the flip side though, when I see people try and enter brand new markets, they end up just fizzling out. And that's not to say you can't be successful when entering a new market, there are just so many easier ways to build a business. The second signal that you'll have an easier time going full time with your app is if you are comfortable delaying gratification. Transitioning into any new business venture is not going to happen overnight. Personally, we transitioned from leaving our full time jobs into running coaching no code apps full time over about a year. And every single time we've made significant changes to our business since then, those have taken about a year as well. Any significant transition period just takes time. Now, can you make things happen more quickly? Well, sure. I mean, you could get a line of credit and pump a ton of money into an early marketing campaign that could bring you an initial spike. But if you don't have the product, the infrastructure, the business systems and more to support that moving forward, then you're just going to come down and go right back to where you started from. But remember, we're talking about going full time with your app. And to me, going full time means being able to build a sustainable business that will bring you an income over the long term. So truly transitioning means taking the time to build the business components that will allow you to operate systematically when it comes to things like lead generation, lead nurture, sales, fulfillment, retention. So if you are the type of person who is comfortable knowing that the work you put in now might not bring you results for a significant amount of time, you'll be able to do all of this. Hey, real quick, if you're finding this video helpful, then I have another one I want you to bookmark. It's over at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop. And in that extended free training, you're actually going to take pen to paper or hands to keyboard rather and start taking your app idea out of your head and turning it into your own custom product. Head to that training next. The third sign that you'll be able to go full time with your app is when you have a good balance between being an integrator versus being a visionary. A lot of people tend to be one or the other. If they're all integrator, it usually means they run like an engine in terms of the work output they're able to do. The problem is these type of people tend to need a lot of constant direction on the exact type of work they should be doing, the exact next steps they should be taking. And if they don't have that direction, they tend to run that engine in the wrong directions. For the people who are more so the visionaries, it means they know every single step that needs to happen in order to reach their goal. The problem is they have a harder time sitting down and just doing the work needed 
to get there. Now, can you hire or partner with one of these types of people if you swing more so the other way? Well, certainly you can, and you can facilitate that balance. But I see a lot of people coming into the no-code space looking for autonomy and complete control over what they're doing. And if that's you, that's why having a balance between being an integrator and being a vision visionary is so helpful because you can see all those next steps that need to happen to reach your goal, but then you can sit down and do the work necessary to get there. For the clients who we personally work with as they build and launch their apps, this balance is actually something we specifically look for because it's so instrumental in hitting your goals. All right, the fourth sign you'll end up going full-time with your app is if you are a problem solver and you enjoy that. The people who I see burn out the fastest with both app development and business growth are the ones who get really, really frustrated by the fact that there are always problems popping up. With app development, there are always issues, bugs, new things to learn and figure out. With business growth, there are always new bottlenecks at every single level you climb to. The ones who succeed, however, are the people who realize that this is the game they have chosen to play. They understand and expect that new problems are going to pop up at every turn because that is just the nature of app development and business growth. So if you are analytical, you are a tinkerer, or you love solving problems, this is a really good sign for you. All right, this fifth sign is a big one. And then we're actually gonna talk about some caveats to these, but the next signal that you will be able to go full-time with your app is that you see failures as reasons to pivot versus reasons to stop. Man, I cannot tell you the number of times we've failed with a product, a service, a campaign. I mean, it's a constant. The reason we've been so successful despite all of that though, is because all of those failures are kind of like reference points put on a map that guide us in the overall direction toward growth. You know how you can go bowling and you can pull out the bumpers so it makes it impossible to get a gutter ball? Well, experiencing failures and using them as pivot points is kind of like building bumpers as you go. And the reality is the only way to truly fail in business is to stop. And so if you are the type of person who sees failures as guidance and reference points versus reasons to stop, then you will do well. Now, with all that being said, I wanna flip the script a little bit. So a lot of first time founders stepping into the no-code space, they are looking for that autonomy and the control like we talked about. A lot of them are looking to operate solo or in a very lean way. They wanna be smart with their financial investments. And so there are three caveats or sort of factors that you need to keep in mind that all relate to the financial component. So even if you have each of those five signs that you'll be able to go full time with your app and you feel confidently about that, pay attention to what we're about to talk through. All right, first things first, I see a lot of savvy marketers in the business growth space online talking about one of two things. Either they specifically and solely talk about building a business to be of service for others, so they only focus on the end users, the customers, the market, or on the flip side, they only focus on talking about building a business for yourself in order to make a lot of money and build that dream lifestyle that you're after. I don't see many people talking about converging the two, and I think that's a disservice to you. If you only have that service mindset, that's your only goal. I see a lot of people burn out from this because they don't create something that is sustainable for themselves, honestly. On the flip side, though, when I see people only thinking about the money, how much money can I make? to build that dream lifestyle, then they don't give their customers, their users, the service and attention that they deserve to also create that sustainable business. The two go hand in hand. You have to provide 
a great product that truly solves a problem for your customers and you have to do it in a way that is going to support your own goals. That's what creates a sustainable business that will allow you to truly make the transition into running your app full time. Now, let's say you do have that balance, which is great. Well, if you've set the personal goals, I see a lot of people only focusing on financial goals. They come up with a number that they want to hit in terms of revenue, which makes sense, right? But the key to creating sustainability in your business is to also set goals around how you want to be spending your time. Because if you are only chasing after a specific revenue number, but you're not thinking about what you're going to have to be doing every minute of every day in order to get there, then you have a high likelihood of just creating another job for yourself at the end of the day that you might not really like. And so when you're looking at those personal goals, yes, you need to set the financial goals, but you also need to set time goals. What do you want to be doing throughout your day? Those two things go hand in hand because that creates sustainability for you. Now, here's another money lesson I learned early on. You can bootstrap your business to success. And a lot of people who are building no code apps, that's what they're looking to do. But you have to understand the importance of making smart investments as you can and as you go in order to continue growing and heading in the right direction toward your goals. For example, we personally invested very early on in coaching and mentorship, and these were significant investments to us, but as soon as we could make them, we did because it accelerated our progress toward the goals. And this is important because when you are building your own business and you want to run solo or with a small team, it's easy to burn out. And the more people you have in your corner, the more people who are helping you or rather just supporting you, the easier it'll be for you to create the sustainability. All right, look, if you've listened closely throughout this video, you know that the key word here is sustainability. If you keep that top of mind with each step you take, you will have a much higher likelihood of transitioning into running your app full time. All right, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, the videos you're about to see on the screen next are gonna help you take it even further.